Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're just going to do a quick video on um, converting MP3 files. And uh, what we're actually going to look at is the methodology that I use when I'm creating audiobooks to convert my MP3 files. So this can also work if you just have a giant collection and you need to do some conversion or whatever else. So the problem is this. When it starts out is when I'm pushing out MP3 files out for distribution as an audiobook, these have to be 192 kilobit per second MP3s. Now, first, let's go ahead and get rid of this comment. Well, use some other format. No, these are for audiobooks. For what you use in your personal devices, hey, have at it, do whatever you want to do. I use MP3s because they're universal, and that's what works, and Linux will work with MP3s perfectly fine. Now, we're talking, though, about distributing audiobooks to the distribution networks, which have to be MP3s of 192 kilobit per second. The problem is MP3s of 192 kilobit per second are massively large, definitely overkill, especially considering that these are simply talking in mono uh, on a mono channel. So, but that is what the distribution channels need to get everything out to whether it's Audible or audiobooks.com or Barnes and Noble or anywhere else you pick up your audiobooks. But when I am distributing my books through other sources, so like my own personal store or through uh, Payhip or through my patrons, by the way, patrons at $5 a month or more or Think Life Media supporters, $5 a month or more, can get a copy of all of my eBooks and audiobooks. Um, so just a, an extra thing, if you would like to help support the channel, that's a, a great perk. Now, to make sure that uh, I have the proper proper formats for my own personal distribution, I use 32 kilobit per second because it doesn't lose any loss of quality for the type of file that they happen to be, but at the same time, they're not massive files. So this chapter 11 here is a 46 megabyte file. The whole book, as you can see, is 479 megabytes. That's way too large just to download as an individual download if you were buying it directly on my store or through Payhip or through my support channels. So what I want to do is I want to create 32 kilobit per second out of these guys. Now, I could open every single one of them up in Audacity and resave them and change the bitrate, and that's annoying. But this is Linux, and Linux has the terminal. And with the terminal, we can use scripts to do this. So the script we're going to be using is LAME. So LAME is a MP3 audio converter. So we can uh, drop in a file, drop in some options. So this is going to allow me to take my 192 kilobit per second files and convert them into 32 kilobit per second files for use on whatever I want. And since this is a terminal application, I can do this via a script. I can create for loops. I can run multiple ones at the same time without having to go in here and type in a whole bunch of stuff. So I can set up my script to do it once. There is a limitation on lame. And uh, if we come down here to near the bottom, of course, you can read through this, get all of the different options and things. It's basically input file and then output, you know, what bit rates are you using? all sorts of things. But when we get down to the bottom of this, they have this note about tags, and this is kind of the limitation. And get down to the bottom. So it will add, it will be able to add one, 1.1, 1 .1, or version two tags, and it does so in a smart fashion. So it's like, oh, ID 1.1 one, uh, 1 .1 tags won't fit because your, your something in your character array is longer than 30 characters. To me, it's a massive limitation that this completely scrubs it out. I would prefer incomplete information to no information at all, particularly if you have one of the cheaper uh, SanDisk MP3 players that only reads 1.1 1 1 .1 version tags. It doesn't read two version tags. And so I'd rather do incomplete data, and I have not found a way that you can force it to use just the data that you want. All right, now... What I've done here is I have created a script over here, 
And uh, the script that I have created is going to, let me see if I can make this guy bigger so we can see what's going on here. So what we're going to do now, of course, the hashtag part is a comment. So this doesn't mean anything. It's just um, tells me what's going on. So first is it's going to make the directory if the directory does not exist. All right. So it's going to check. Now I'm creating a directory called 32. All right. And then what we're going to do is we run the script here. So what this is doing is this is this guy here. The first stage is a for loop for F in star mp3 in other words it's looking for anything in this directory that is an mp3 file and it's going to do something for every one of these as designated by f do is what it's going to do we're going to call the application lame which is the terminal based application and we're specifying the input and then the bit rate of 32 so if i expand this guy out a little bit more and put this all in one line here uh, then what we're going to do is it's going to specify when I put my input in, my output is going to be at 32 kilobit per second. And then what are we putting in? We are putting in file and then we are outputting the same thing. All right. Now, as we input and output, basically, this is going to make sure that my file structure remains the same. Everything else remains the same. And then the done closes the, the file. All right. So with that being said, we are going to go ahead and we are going to show you this script and we're going to pull up the active directory to show you what we're doing. Okay, so here I have pulled up the file. So of course on my desktop I have the book and then I have the audio book and of course always do things on backup or test accounts in case something goes wonky and I overwrite my file. I don't want to lose my files. So I copied it and I created a, a duplicate of this inside of this test directory. So this is my audiobook at 192 kilobit per second. So the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to this section. So we're going to go to desktop and I believe the folder is happy holidays and audiobooks. I'm just typing the first couple uh, the first couple letters there and hitting the tab key to autofill if you don't know how to do that. We're going to list this. You know, we, we can see here that we have the uh, 192 kbps. That's my raw files. I have the dash test. And then, of course, I have other things, including the Audacity files, the waves, and things like that. So now we're going to go into the 192 dash test. And you can see what we have in here. We have all of my chapters. I have my retail sample, and I have my audiobook. Now what we're going to do is my script is actually in a separate location. So going back here, back to my home directory, inside of documents, inside of scripts. See, these are the scripts that I do. So if I'm doing converting resizing, if I'm doing PDFs to JPEGs, I have different scripts for the various terminal tasks that I need to run. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit bash and we're going to go and find my documents. Now, since I am buried within a folder on my desktop, I can't just type in documents and expect to get there. I have to put in my tilde slash documents. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to scripts and I'm going to do my MP3 script. Now, as soon as I run this, we're gonna see the script is gonna be running on my terminal panel and automatically you're gonna see a 32 file appear over here. So let's go ahead and run that. You can see what it's doing now is it is running the script. We added our dot 32. And if I were to go into here, you'll see that it's going to be adding the files as we go. So you can see the status, the percentage, it's going to be three more seconds, two, one, and that file's complete. Now we are adding the next one. So I'm going to come back into this when this guy is done. Okay, so now we are done. So let's go back and have a look at that chapter 11. Now we are at 7.8. Now do these sound the same? Well, let's listen to chapter 11 here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and hit play on this guy. Happy Halloween. Tom's reflection on Halloween. Like most kids, our growing up revolved around two perfect holidays. Obviously, Christmas was the first. But what else could possibly rival Halloween? In those okay, so that is the one we just created at 32. Let's go back and do the same file over here. Happy Halloween. Tom's reflection on Halloween. 
Like most kids, our growing up revolved around two perfect holidays. Obviously, Christmas was the first. But what else could... Okay, so they sound, for the most part, just about the same. All right, now, what we're going to do next is here is our limitation is the tag files because the audio tags on these did not actually, uh, they would not fit into the version one. Lame completely leaves them off, which I don't like. I think it's mm, lame. Oh, that's a bad pun. What I'd like to see is an option, and if somebody knows of one, please let me know. I would be very obliged to add that to my script. So over here, you can see these are the originals. You can see what our tags look like. And then if we go into our 32s, you can see that our tags are all retained except it's scrubbed off the tag one. So what I actually do now is you can just come into here, select all these guys. This is using kid three, and then Go from tag one, pull this down, and hit from tag two. All right. Now, I actually, since I do this all the time, I actually created a hotkey. Control number one will automatically create a tag one from my tag two information because this is something I run into all the time. So now you'll see that these indicating red, indicating that something doesn't work right. So what's going on is... The comment is being scrubbed off of my uh, tag 1.1. This is why lame leaves it off. Since any of one of those fields throws an error, it, it leaves all of those off of the tag. I don't like that, but like I said, I'd rather have incomplete data than having no data at all. So now I can save this, and now all of my version th uh, 3.2s are ready to go. So now these guys are ready for distribution, but I might want to go ahead and grab my picture from there, paste this in, and generally I don't include the retail sample inside my 32-bit. So now that this is done, I can package this guy up in a zip file and I can push this out for distribution on my networks that need the 32 kilobit file. Well, with that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this little video on managing some of your MP3 files. Hopefully it gave you some information. If you've needed to convert a bunch of MP3s, hey, run that little script in there and uh, that'll actually convert stuff. I'll go ahead and put this script down there. Uh, you will just need to grab it and modify it for any sizes, dimensions, and things that you want. So thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.